Right. I'm going to talk about uh, utilization of uh, bentos, sugars, for the Ella species. Um, I'm sure you've uh, heard of water talk about uh, a lot about bentos, sugars. Uh, bentos, sugars like cellulose are not consumed by a lot of microorganisms. That's why uh, they're termed as uh, non fermentable sugars. And they are the second most available uh, renewable organic material on Earth. And the biomass actually contains about 37% heavy cellulose. And hence, xylose and other pentose sugars like arabinose and xylitol were fed to the Corella vulgaris uh, species uh, in the, I think in 1999, uh, by the uh, Toyota Motor Corporation. Uh, these were the experimental conditions that were used by them. They used, uh, the growth media was prepared without adding, any, uh, adding a carbon source and this was, this was the growth media that was actually uh, prepared and then they used glycose, uh, glucose, xylose and xylitol were added to this experiments. And this is also exposed to three to five uh, seconds of UV, UV radiation, basically a mixotropic environment. And the experiment were, experiments were conducted at uh, ambient temperature and a pH of about 6.8. Then the absorbance was uh, checked at 655 uh, nanometers after, after two weeks. Uh, these were some of the uh, results that were actually produced by them. You can see that the top one is the glucose and the bottom one is uh, uh, the xylose consumption over time. Uh, based on the growth rate of uh, the uh, algae biomass and you can definitely see that there is some amount of xylose that is being uh, consumed by the algae, the same uh, chlorella species. This was another experiment that they conducted with xylitol and arabinose and uh, you can see that the xylitol is actually being consumed as much as the xylose, but like the arabinose is actually being consumed as much as the xylose, but uh, not the xylitol. And based on these experiments, they actually conducted another set of experiments with the uh, mixtures of uh, feedstocks. You can see that these these are the uh, xylose and glucose mixtures, which is like 50% of xylose and 50% of glucose. And when when compared with uh, uh, 50 or uh, the 100% glucose, they were actually able to get a, get a growth rate of um, almost. Uh, similar uh, biomass uh, growth, but they have not done any kind of experiments uh, to find out the lipid content. Uh, from this uh, from this study, uh, I'm actually trying to uh, work the same uh, principle uh, with uh, glycerol mixtures, like glycerol and uh, xylose mixtures. Preliminary results actually show like uh, good growth of uh, algae on uh, these kind of feedstocks. But uh, and the experiments actually are con being uh, conducted in the absence of light, whereas they uh, actually used uh, a little bit of light uh, to conduct these experiments, and the data will actually be compared um, with the effect of light also. And the best data will be taken out and uh, uh, used in a fed patch experiment and uh, seen if we are able to uh, replicate the data. And as of now, we've not done any kind of lipid uh, extractions from the uh, algae, but that is something that uh, we, are, we are also working on. Uh, these are some of the references and there any questions. So you're stating uh, what's 37 percent hemicellulose? Yes. And how much cellulose is typical? I'm not sure. I think I, I'm not sure. I think about around 30 to uh, 60 percent cellulose. 30 to 50 percent cellulose. The 30 to 50 percent? Cellulose, but I'm, I'm not really sure uh, on the uh, cellulose content, but uh, 37 percent is uh, MI cellulose, uh, which is one of the older references, I guess, uh, which I got from this paper, but I'm not sure, like, uh, with respect to all the other feedstocks, like uh, hardwood and uh, softwood. Yeah, so what, what biomass are you referring to there? Uh, like, just general biomass, like, it's, a, it's an average number that they have from this paper, and but I've average, got, like, okay. cited other sources. Okay, okay. okay. Any other questions? Back in the, the graph that had the xylose, yes. what was the difference between the xylose select and the xylose? Oh, yeah. That's something that I'm wondering also, but I'm going to try and explain as much as I can. Um, the xylose control is basically what they got out of the, uh, um, like when we get our strains, it's basically stored in an acetate medium, and immediately they take, they take the algae out of the acetate medium and grow it on uh, xylose, and that is basically their control. And then, over a period of time, they kept growing it on uh, xylose mixtures, and uh, they actually made it, uh, like they made their own cultures. And then they selected uh, one particular strain that actually had higher uh, uh, biomass growth, and that was one. But I'm not able to exactly uh, figure out myself on why the um, uh, xylose control, uh, xylose control experiments uh, are different from the glucose control experiments. Like, can you see the variation between the xylose control and xylose select and uh, glucose control and glucose select? I'm not able to figure out. I was myself.
Yeah, the bottom two are silos and the top two are glucose. This is actually the control experiment of silos and this is the select. And the white dot is the control experiment for glucose and the black one is the select. So basically they selected strains over, they kept growing it and over a period of time yeah, they took a particular strain. Yeah, I think it takes some sometimes time to get used to the new condition. So the first, if the first one is the control. Yeah, that's probably what they did, but it was not actually done in any, any university. It was done in a, a company and the paper did not actually give me exact a lot of details and there's not a lot of research being done on xylose utilization. Like if this paper was done in the late 90s and after which like it's really surprising to see that not a lot of people have actually, you can see the, you can see the data, after looking at the data, I'm really surprised that not a lot of people actually try this. Well, there's a lot of, I mean, there's definitely a lot of research on xylos right now. Uh, but right? not with the, the same uh, chlorella species. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, right. So it may not be converting very well, possibly. Yes. But, uh, That's what I okay. thought. Because you can see that it's almost on par. The yields are like almost on par. But they don't have any um, research on <laughs> the lipid content. But uh, this is basically, the, they just calculate the uh, compact the growth rates. Right. Okay. Good.